Lesson 42 of Home Geography for Primary Grades. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Home Geography for Primary Grades by C. C. Long. Lesson 42. More about things found in the earth. We have seen that there are many kinds of metals. There are also many kinds of stone. Those which are strong and do not crumble by exposure are useful for building. The place from which stones are taken for building is called a quarry. The most common stones are granite, sandstone, limestone, marble, and slate. First, we will examine a piece of granite. How hard and firm it is! what a beautiful clean surface when polished granite is used for steps for paving streets and for sidewalk curbings are houses ever built of granite can you think of other uses for granite why is granite used for these purposes it is easily shaped it is hard enough to give strength it is enduring what does enduring mean this is a piece of sandstone made of little grains of sand. It will crumble more easily than granite. What does crumble mean? Brownstone, used in building, is a kind of sandstone. And this is the common gray limestone, of which lime used in building is made. The large oven in which lime is burned is called a lime kiln. Did you ever see one? Can you tell how the lime is made? Here are three pieces of marble. This piece is pure white. This is colored. It is marked by many strange forms, as you can see in your mantelpiece and tabletops. In this piece, you see many colored spots. Mottled, it may be called. Marble is beautiful when polished. In what different ways have you seen marble used? What parts of furniture are sometimes marble? Why is it suitable for this? Is marble ever used for building houses? Do you think it would be good for that purpose? Why? Which do you think is the best of all building stones? Why? Marble and granite are the most beautiful and enduring of all building stones. Chalk is a variety of limestone. Could it be used as a building stone? Is chalk harder or softer than other stone? You need not be told the name of this dark stone. You could not get along well in school without slate. Slate is easily split into thin plates and has a smooth, firm surface. Slate is used to write on. It is used in house building. What part of a house is sometimes slate? Think of other uses. Why is it useful for these purposes? We must not forget brick in our talks about things that come out of the ground. Brick is not found in the earth, as the metals and stone are found, but it is made of clay, which is itself a part of the ground. Have you ever seen a brickyard? What are some of the uses of bricks? What is the man called who builds houses with bricks? Is glass taken out of a mine or quarry? No, but glass is made from sand which is also a part of the ground. In laying brick or stone, the mason uses mortar. Mortar is made chiefly of lime. Lime is made of stone, which comes out of the ground. If possible, visit mines and quarries. Take careful notice of all you see, and on your return to school, tell what you have learned. End of Lesson 42《レッスン43of Home Geography for Primary Grades》This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jill Engel Home Geography for Primary Grades by C. C. Long《レッスン43How People Live and What They Are Doing》Can you think of anything used in building houses that does not come from the earth? 
Do all people have large, fine houses of brick or stone to live in? What is a tent? A wigwam? Who lives in huts? Did you ever hear of people who live in snow houses? In some places, houses are built of bamboo. Bamboo is a kind of cane that grows in warm countries. What building is now going up in this place? Tell the use of stone, brick, mortar, iron, tin, lead, and glass in building the house. Where and how are they obtained? We could not live without food. We must also have clothes to wear and houses to live in. Besides these, we need schools, books, and churches, which make us wiser and better. Now, if you think a little, you can name many other things which we need to make our homes beautiful. To supply us with all of these things, men must do many different kinds of work. Where does the food we eat come from? We get most of it from plants. Wheat, corn, peas, and beans are seeds of plants. Almost all our bread is made from wheat. Beets, turnips, and radishes are roots of plants. Lettuce and cabbage are the leaves of plants. Apples, peaches, pears, and other fruits grow on plants. All these we use for food. Plants also supply us with material for clothing. Some clothes are made from cotton. Cotton grows in the pod of a plant. Some clothes are made from linen. Linen comes from flax, which is a plant. Hats are made from straw. Straw is the stem or stalk of plants. Now, these plants, which supply us with so much of our food and clothing, do not grow of themselves. The ground must be plowed, the seeds planted, and taken care of while growing. So, outside the city, you may see a great many people at work raising grain, vegetables, and other plants. This occupation we call agriculture or farming. The people we call farmers. Animals, as well as plants, furnish much of our food. All meat comes from animals. We get milk from cows. From milk, we make butter and cheese. Animals also supply us with clothing. Many articles of dress are made of wool. Wool, you know, grows on the sheep. Shoes and kid gloves are made of leather. Leather is made from the hides of cows, sheep, oxen, and goats. But animals could not live and grow if people did not carefully raise them. In the country, you may see flocks of sheep and herds of cows and oxen feeding on the fresh sweet grass of the pastures. Those animals are called stock. The business of those who raise them is called stock raising. Most farmers raise cows, horses, and other animals. Which land does the farmer use for pasture? What is a pasture? What is a meadow? Grazing needs feeding on grass. What animals have you seen grazing? Does a dog graze? A cow? Mountains, so rough and rocky, are not good for farms and gardens, but many of them contain coal, on which millions of people depend for heat and light. In mountains, too, we find iron, which is more useful to us than gold and silver. To get these, thousands of men are at work in places called mines. A mine is like a great cavern. There is neither sun nor sky. Torches and lamps give the only light the miners have to see by. The air is damp and close. I suppose you would not like to work in such a place. Yet great numbers of persons are employed in mining. How is coal taken out of a mine? What are the dangers of coal mining? Try to find answers to these questions for yourself. If necessary, your teacher will help you. In some parts of the country are forests of pine, oak, and other trees. Some of these forests are so large we might travel for days or weeks through them. From trees we get lumber. Lumber is needed for building houses and ships and for furniture. So a great many men are employed in cutting down trees and preparing the wood for use. This is called lumbering. The lumbermen go into the woods in winter and build themselves little huts to live in. All through the winter months they work in the woods from sunrise to sunset felling the best trees and cutting them into logs. Then they haul them over the snow-covered ground to the frozen streams and pile them upon the banks. Here the logs must rest till the snow and ice have melted and the streams are full. Then they are floated down to the great sawmills 
and cut up into boards, lathes, shingles, and other kinds of lumber. What is a forest? Name some forest trees that grow near your home. The sea yields much that we eat. Some parts abound in codfish, mackerel, and herring. Sardines, the little fish that come in boxes, are also found in the sea. It is the business of thousands of people who live near the ocean to catch fish, salt them, and pack them, to send to those who want them for food. Have you ever seen the ocean or eaten any of its fish? Name some fishes found in fresh water. Name some kinds of fishes found in waters near where you live. How may they be caught? End of lesson 43. Lesson 44 of Home Geography for Primary Grades. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jill Engel. Home Geography for Primary Grades by C. C. Long. Lesson 44. More about what people are doing. In the city or the town we shall find many of the people busy about something else than the occupations we have learned. What do you suppose it is? If you go about the city you will see large buildings several stories high with long rows of windows and great smoking chimneys. These are mills or factories full of machines in motion doing their work almost like human beings. The people who work in them make almost everything that is needed for our use. Wheat is changed into flour, cotton into thread, fine muslins and pretty calicoes, leather into boots and shoes, iron and steel into plows, stoves and cutlery, lumber into wagons, carriages, and all kinds of furniture. Other articles which we must not forget are elegant jewelry, all sorts of ornaments for parlors, and beautiful toys which you admire so much. It would take a long time to name a small part of the things made in the busy mills and factories, but think of the articles used in your home, and you may be sure they are manufactured articles. You see, manufacturing gives work to many thousands of persons. What is cutlery? Name some articles of cutlery. We need many things which we do not produce. Other people need things which they do not produce. How can each obtain what he needs? By exchanging one thing for another. This exchange of goods, or buying and selling them for money, gives rise to another occupation called trade or commerce. So many people spend their time buying and selling grain, vegetables, clothing, boots and shoes, or in sending them to places where they are needed. On all the large rivers and lakes you may see boats going up and down, carrying goods from one part of the country to another. Can you think how goods are carried from place to place? where there are no rivers? In countries where few people live, goods are often carried in wagons and on the backs of animals. I wonder how many people have to work to get food and clothing for us. Make a list of all the occupations you can think of. Perhaps you can think of other occupations we have not named. Is dressmaking an occupation? Teaching? Which occupation would you prefer? Why? If you think, Perhaps you can tell why men do different kinds of work. What people do to make a living depends very much upon the place they live in. For men almost always do that kind of work that pays them best for their labor. Those who live where the land is rich and level will raise grain to make flour, or cotton and flax to make clothing. Some people among the mountains work in the mines. Some keep cows for their milk and butter, and sheep for their wool. For the hills in many of the mountainsides afford excellent pasture. People who live near the sea will be apt to catch fish along the coast, or engage in trade upon the water. Employments in the city differ widely from those in the country. Here, as we have learned, most people make their living by working in factories, or as merchants in buying and selling goods which come from all parts of the world. All people do not live in the same way. Some people have no churches, schools, books, or factories. What do people who live in this way eat? What do they wear? How do they spend their time? End of Lesson 44 
Lesson 45 of Home Geography for Primary Grades. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sarah Jennings. Home Geography for Primary Grades by C. C. Long. Lesson 45. A Review Lesson. What kind of work is done by the people among whom you live? Are they farmers? How does the farmer make his living? Where does he sell the things which he raises? Where does he buy his sugar and tea and other things which he needs? Do you live in a city? What are the chief occupations of the people? Do they work in shops or mills or factories? Name some mills or factories in or near your city. What articles are made there? What manufactured articles are in the schoolroom? At home. What do you call the men who make these articles? What kinds of goods are sold in the stores? What is a grocery store? A dry goods store? A shoe store? Where did the things in these stores come from? Which were made in your city? Which were brought from other places? What railroads or canals are in the city? Do boats come to the wharves? What do the boats or railroads take away? What do they bring in return? Write the following. Farmers raise blank. Write the names of all the things you can think of. Miners dig blank out of the earth. Quarrymen dig blank from the quarries. A shoemaker makes blank. A blacksmith makes blank. Merchants buy and sell blank. End of lesson 45. End of Home Geography for Primary Grades by C.C. C. Long.